Okay, hi there, and welcome to a short video on macroeconomics and something that's on the syllabus for most exam boards, the use and the difficulties, the limitations of economic forecasts. In March 2019, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development uh, downgraded its forecast for most of the world's biggest economies, including the UK, the forecast growth fell from 1.4% to less than 1%. And they also cut the forecast growth for the Eurozone economy as well. The chart here shows the forecast growth for GDP for the United States, for France, for the Eurozone, the UK, Japan and Germany. In this video, I'm going to take you through a sample answer to two questions, two exam style questions. The first one will be using the data, explain two likely causes of the forecast of slower growth for the UK. Explanation, of course, doesn't require any evaluation. And my second question will be examine two difficulties facing economists when forecasting economic growth. So here we go. Let's go through uh, my suggested answer to those two questions. Using the data, explain two likely causes of the forecast of slower growth. Well, one likely cause uh, mentioned in the extract, I suppose, is the uncertainty surrounding Brexit. So Keynes, of course, was an economist who understood the psychology of macro and argued that uncertainty amongst consumers and businesses can lead to a deterioration in animal spirits. And that can then cause a fall in planned capital investment spending. Investment is an important but volatile component of aggregate demand. And if businesses are worried about the, the future trade relationships with the European Union, then some capital investment projects might either be scrapped entirely or perhaps postponed. So a fall in investment would then cause slower GDP growth and may also lead to a fall in real consumption. Perhaps households become more worried about the future and start to save more. Second cause of weaker growth is that the OECD has downgraded expected growth for other countries. The extract, of course, says that Eurozone growth forecasts were cut from 1.8% to just 1%. Well, what does this mean? Well, most of our trade, well, the biggest slice of our trade, is done with the other nations inside the European Union. And if the, UK, if the EU economy slows down, then UK firms may find it difficult to sell exports. That could then lead to a fall in export sales, leading to a contraction in output, profits and investment in key export industries such as car manufacturing. Again, using the extracts, Germany is the biggest economy in the European Union and the OECD forecast, according to the chart, is that Germany will grow in 2019 by just 0.8%. So the biggest economy in the, in the EU will be suffering one of the slowest growth rates that will clearly impact on the UK. Now let's think about the, the second question, the issue about uh, why it is hard to make forecasts. In this case, why is, it, why is it hard to forecast economic growth? You can actually take any macroeconomic variable and say that forecasting is difficult. The key thing is just to think about why that might be the case and then evaluate it. Here's two perspectives on this particular question. Well, one reason why forecasts are difficult is that there are so many uncertain variables affecting the economy, so many moving parts, if you like. For example, the GDP growth forecast could easily be affected by unexpected changes in world commodity prices, the prices, for example, of oil and gas. Usual knowledge here, the UK is a net importer of oil, so if the world price goes up, for example from $60 to $80, then our trade deficit will increase because the value of imports has risen. And it will also lead to an increase in inflation, which would then have a knock-on effect of reducing real incomes for households and profits for businesses. So it's hard to predict the growth rate because of uh, the unexpected changes in the, um, in the price of oil and gas. However, evaluation coming up, many businesses, including airlines, now hedge commodity prices in futures markets. That helps to reduce the uncertainty. And if you can hedge against that, that might make the economy less sensitive to price shocks and perhaps a little easier to forecast. 
My second point, second reason why all forecasts are subject to margins of error is because we're not quite certain about the direction of economic policy. You might make your growth forecast, for example, based on what you think is going to happen to interest rates, including the base rate of interest set by the Bank of England. Well, your forecast may turn out to be inaccurate if the central bank decides to start increasing interest rates perhaps sooner than forecast, or, or perhaps they increase interest rates by more than you forecast. And that would have impact on certain industries, for example, the construction sector. If interest rates start going up sooner than you thought, that could lead to an appreciation of the exchange rate, which would then affect the accuracy of your forecast for export sales. Strong pound, for example, makes imports, che imports cheaper, but exports dearer, and therefore you might see a slowdown in exports. So two uh, reasons for difficulty. One is so many moving parts, so many variables. And secondly, uncertainty about policy. A counter argument, this is my evaluation, is that many households in the UK now have fixed rate mortgages. The interest rate on their mortgage is fixed for one, three, five years possibly. So that reduces the impact of changes in interest rates. Now, if you know that, it might be easier to model, to build it into your model of the economy and forecast the effects of changes in monetary policy on growth. You, know, you make a case for saying that interest rates therefore have less impact on growth, therefore that makes growth easier to forecast. Over the years, one could, one could make a, a reasonably compelling case for saying that forecasting has become, has become better, in part because we now have so much more data, oftentimes available in real time, about consumer and business behaviour. Lots of economists now forecast uh, based in part on Google searches, people's uh, searches for certain terms which might help us to assess their, their sentiment. So that makes forecasting a little bit more accurate and uh, uh, in that sense more uh, sophisticated. However, economics is and always will be a social science. We can never be certain about the likely behaviour of any agent in the economy, be it a consumer, a small business or a multinational. And given that social science nature, it doesn't mean that macroeconomic forecasting is never easy. Okay, thank you for joining in this video.